everyone, uh, welcome to this video. In this video, I am going to show you how to draft a corset cover based on this uh, antique original that I own. You can pause the video as much as you want or rewind or go ahead and look at the close-ups of the original. It's all fine. I hope you will enjoy it. And yeah, maybe just let's get to it. Okay, so here we have the original on the dress form. Uh, there's a very pretty lace to use here. I'm not going to mark how wide it is in my pattern because how wide your lace will be is probably different than what is used here. Uh, the corset cover has a drawstring waist and a rolled hem. The straps are supposed to be 36 centimeters or 14 inches long. Here we go to the side seam. I don't know if you... Yeah, here you can see the tiny rolled edge where the lace is whip stitched to. Let's see. Yes, this is the side seam. I think this is a French seam. You can... I don't know if the camera picks it up. No, it does not here. I'll show you in a moment. But um, yeah, the back. This is a, a hidden buttonhole button closure. I'm going to opt for a normal button closure because this is a beginner's pattern drafting tutorial. Okay, get get back to the side seam. Here we have, you can see the threads coming out of the right side. So that's why I think it's a French seam. Stitched right sides together and then turned over wrong sides together. Yeah, the gathered waist. Yeah, here you can see how tiny, tiny, tiny this rolled help actually is. It's about a millimeter, if even. There's a separate pattern piece for the buttonhole closure. I'm going to extend it all the way down. I'm going to start uh, by measuring the bust. This is also the only measurement you actually are going to need. I'm using my own measurements. My bust is 104 centimeter. That would be 40.9 inch. I'm going to divide this by two as we're only drafting half a pattern. And then I'm going to add two centimeters of ease, which leaves me with 45 centimeters or 21.25 inch of my measurement A. This is important because we're going to need that several times in the future. You also want to know the halfway point of your measurement A, and that would be in my case, 27 centimeters or 10.6 inch. We are going to start at the top left side of the pattern paper. We're going to draft a line, the length of our measurement A from left to right. And the end point is point two. Then we are going to the length at center front. Uh, I'm using a square ruler to make sure my uh, lines are totally square. I'm now going to mark the center front length. And that is 35 centimeters or 13 and three quarters of an inch in length. Just going to mark that down. The end of this line I'm going to mark 0.4. And point three is five centimeters up or two inches. This will be the skirt or the peplum part of the pattern. Now let's continue to the center back. We're going to draw a line, same as center front, same length. So 35 centimeters or 13 and three quarters of an inch. And again, uh, I'm going to mark the five centimeters up for the peplum part or the skirts of that. The bottom of the line, I'm going to mark six and the five centimeter up is going to mark the five. Now we're going to connect these points and these should be just the same length as your measurement A. So this way you can check up on yourself if you did your work correctly and if your lines were totally square. Now the three to five line, we also are going to mark the halfway point between those two and that would be marked as seven. So your measurements are different, so the distances could be different as well. Now, for the center back, we are going to mark up from point 
five for 23 centimeters or nine inch. The center back is shorter than the center front is, so that's why we are doing this. Now mark that as 0.8 and then we are going to connect 0.1 with 0.8. I'm only connecting these as a dotted line because this is more of a guideline. Um, you'll see for future reference where this will be necessary for. So after we've done that, we're going to draft the side seam. This will start at point seven straight up, hitting the intersection uh, of point of the line one to eight, and this will be marked as point nine. From there, we are going to make short horizontal lines to square out the center front and center back. We don't want to have an inverted V or a V at center front or center back. We want it to be just square, so that's why we are doing this. We are now going to draft a curved line connecting point 1 with point 8 going over point 9. This is a bit of an eyeballing thing. You can use a French ruler if you have one. If you like using them, you don't have to. I'm using not using one in this case. I will use one later on. So it doesn't really matter. It's up to you. It's a bit fiddly if you've never done this before, but it should be a gentle curve. But you want it to be straight at center front and center back because otherwise if it's going slightly upwards or downwards, you'll either get a V shape or you get a upwards point and that's just not is not what we're going for right now as the original is also just straight across at center front and center back. We are now going to draft a line parallel to the center back. This would be two centimeters apart from the center back line. This will be the place where the buttons and buttonholes will be uh, at the end of the uh, day. Uh, two centimeters is three quarters of an inch for those of you who speak inch. And uh, you connect these with the center top and center bottom at center back um, with point eight and point six. Um, yeah, so you have a true rectangular point. We are now going to mark out the buttonholes. The top buttonhole is three quarter of a centimeter lower than the top edge and higher than the waist seam. This would be 0 0.3 inch for those who speak inch, one third of an inch that is. For the rest they are five and a half centimeters apart, which would be two and a quarter an inch. So yeah, let's get those marked out. I'm making the buttonholes a centimeter wide. This means they're suitable for buttons that are three millimeters smaller, so seven millimeter buttons. So yeah, that's about one third of an inch. Yes. Sorry, I'm not fluently in inches yet. Now we're going to mark all of the pattern symbols. You've seen these before if you've ever worked with bigger company patterns. These are things as the grain lines, the number of each pattern piece and uh, the symbol we are going to use a lot is the cut on fold symbol. This is actually a line almost like a grain line only the arrows just don't point upwards and downwards but to the side that is supposed to be cut on fold. The next symbol uh, are the grain lines. These are lines that are parallel to center front, center back and the side seam in this pattern. Sometimes there will be patterns where they are completely in different directions, but that's not on, on the case right now. We're just going for straight, parallel, uh, vertical uh, grain lines. The, you mark these with a line and an arrow pointing up and also downwards at both ends. And we're going to draft a cut and fold symbol also on the peplum or the skirt part below the waist and we're going to number each pattern piece so that we remember which is what. Be smart and write this down what is what on a separate separate piece of paper. Okay, now we're on to tracing the pattern pieces onto a separate piece of paper so that we can actually cut them out in a moment. Be sure to leave room for the seam allowances if you are going to trace them. 
uh, if you want to be too sparse with your paper you might not have enough room around them so be sure to have the room for that preferably if you are a beginner in pattern drafting you want to use the same seam allowance everywhere because well that's less things to remember but that's not the case right now we have a pattern that is different in every edge i'm going to start with the peplum pattern piece and we're going to pay extra attention to the seam allowances the tiny rolled hem at the bottom edge will be uh, three quarters of a centimeter and one third of an inch the waist seam seam allowance is double as wide as that and that's one and a half centimeter or five eighth of an inch then we have only the center back seam allowance left this is the widest of them all this is two centimeters or three quarters of an inch okay on to the center front pattern piece I'm going to line the paper up with the center front just so to save some paper this is also where the cut and fold symbol is going to be I'm just gonna trace around the lines of the pattern piece and add the seam allowances accordingly I am using a French curve here to even out my line a bit like I said before there's no need to do this per se it's just making for a more straightened out line I guess so yeah just if you have it and want to use it do it if not also fine don't forget to mark out all of the pattern symbols such as the green line the number of the pattern piece and the cut and fold symbol the waist seam seam allowance is one and a half centimeters that would be five eighth of an inch the side seam is one centimeter that would be three eighths of an inch and lastly the top that is 0 0.75 centimeters and that would make for one quarter of an inch seam allowance in inches okay on to the back pattern piece again we have different seam allowances all around they're fairly the same as the center front pattern piece was the top edge has a seam allowance of 0 0.75 centimeters that would be one quarter of an inch the waist seam allowance is one and a half centimeter that would be five eighth of an inch the side is one centimeter so three eighth of an inch and the center back is the widest of them all with two centimeters or three quarters of an inch again i'm using the french ruler to even out my top edge if you don't have one don't worry you'll be fine i'm not marking out the width of the lace because probably your lace would be smaller or wider than the original laces so uh, for the pattern drafting it doesn't really matter you just deduct the width of the lace of the total length and make a rolled edge top hem on to the last pattern piece which would be the reinforcement for the buttonhole closure this also has a seam allowance to the side of two centimeters and at the top and bottom edge there's a 75, 0 0.75 centimeters seam allowance or one quarter of an inch the important part here are all of the markings as there is a cut on fold symbol on the right edge and there's green line and of course there's the buttonholes we've marked those out before so you can just trace them so you should be totally fine here we are going to cut out all of the pattern pieces now if you're watching this during COVID and you are joining the badge ribbon collecting game then there will be a code for you popping up in just a moment so you can collect your pattern drafting badge if you're watching this video after COVID, then there's nothing to worry yourself with but this is what the code is for okay so this is what you should end up with this is how your pattern pieces should look like your pieces probably looks a, look a bit different as your measurements are different but yeah there's a close-up also from the cut on fold symbol and that's about it so now that we've drafted the corset cover uh, i hope you've enjoyed it i hope you've learned a thing or two and yeah don't forget to like and subscribe and see you next time